I guess something that uh, that our, our books have in common is you become a member of a, a religion with yeah. quite specific rules and uh, religions don't like you leaving and and medicine has got all the hallmarks of a I don't know a, a, you know a cult, cult. Um, and it's very hard to leave and it's very hard to press that press that button but I talk about how I attempted to and how um, I um, and how life looks now and how I'm trying to undo some of the damage I think I did to myself and others did to me and also think about how we can improve things in future so you can be you so you can participate in, in the NHS which is I think the most amazing wonderful thing our greatest achievement as a as a society um, but without doing damage to yourself it's interesting in, in the book you, you you talk a lot about the burden of expectations not least your own that form a, a career that I think and I think for all of us really um, and then if you decide to take a different path from those early formative expectations there is a sort of um, there is a long tail of, of, of guilt and uncertainty and insecurity mm. and um, I wonder I wonder it seems to me this is um, particularly because we're, we're, we're moving to a world where people are going to live longer and longer this whole idea that that you impress upon young people um, when they are barely the babies you know they're 11 12 that you know this is what you should do this is what you must do this is if you don't do this you're going to your life will be a disaster a totally binary kind of choice is are we actually letting them down in some way i would say so i imagine there are some people who absolutely know what they want to do and that's come from the right place that's a, voca Not, that's a vocation though isn't yeah, it uh, i don't think it's possible to know that you want to be a doctor when you see your careers advisor when you choose the a levels that the universities yeah. want you to have as a teenager i just think it's you might you, you can like the idea of it or you can like uh holby city and you can like all sorts of different things but i don't think you can understand what the job actually involves and i've thought for a long time that we're choosing doctors the wrong way but also i think we're choosing them at the wrong age so I'm not going to start advocating for anything else in the American healthcare system, which I think is absolutely abhorrent for the, for the most part. But their medical students are generally postgraduates. So, and there's a big difference between being a 16 year old choosing your A-levels or hires and being someone who's 21, who's, you've left home, you've maybe had a relationship of some sort, you've maybe had to earn some money for yourself. And I think at that point, you've got much more of a chance of um, you know, you've got a sort of a, a wider angle on the world, and I think you're much more likely to know if medicine's the job for you at that point. You you, you talk about the role of humour in your not not just as, as now what you know what you do and and, mm. the, and you know you're a, a, you know fantastically gifted comic writer, but but um, you talk about it as your armour and, and as a weakness as well, and and and, and which is very interesting because. I think that says a, that's a very subtle insight into what humour is, and I wondered if you could elaborate on that a little. So, at medical school, and then when you work as a doctor, you're not taught how to cope. You're taught how to break bad news to someone, or but never once the impact that has on you as a person. And I, there's a bit in the book where I have to go back to my GCSE physics and say that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It's never equal what comes back to you as a healthcare professional, but there's always some opposite reaction. And you're not taught how to cope, so you find your own ways. And I've got um, both of my ways on stage with me at the moment. I've got uh, writing stuff down and uh, <laughs> relatively cheap white wine. Um, and Perhaps they champions. <laughs> they both they both work to a certain extent and they can give you a buffer for certain situations but they're not enough and it's a profession that almost i would say deliberately doesn't encourage speaking to other people and taking time out and admitting you're human because you're a bloody doctor and you bloody get on with it and you're you're almost encouraged to think of yourself as other 
or superhuman, but you're not. You're just an idiot 16 year old who, who decided on those A-levels and you've now got a stethoscope and you're, you're now doing an important, vital role, but you're still human. And you are someone who gets stuff wrong and gets sick and gets sad, but there needs to be a culture shift so that we acknowledge that. And there's a lot of talk about well-being at the moment within the NHS. And it's, it's a necessary chat, you know, particularly off the back of COVID, but it needs to go deep and it needs to address this stuff. Because if you actually look into it, uh, it tends to mean they've just started a Zumba class. <laughs> yes, which is intrinsically good, though not necessarily It's not quite the enough. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we won't do the job on its own.